Hey, welcome back to episode two of the Digital Agora. I'm Yash, joined here with Chris. Hello. Danny. Yo, what's up? And newcomer, Sean. Danny stole my intro, so I'll just say hi. <laughs> Since our Sorry, last bro. episode, uh, a lot has happened in the real world. And uh, one of our contemporary conundrums is, what yeah. the hell is going on over at the Olympics? Uh, thoughts? Anyone? I think it's just an entire mess to be given as, as an, just as an establishment. The way it's being run is a little questionable. Yeah, you want to elaborate as, on that a little? Yeah, just as like a brief overview. It's there's a lot of uh, very suspicious uh, rulings coming out of the Olympic Committee recently. Most of them concerning uh, racial matters, but you know, there's there's a, there's a lot of stuff. Uh, they they did they said some stuff about marijuana. That uh, made some people upset. They uh, they're out here making rules on hair caps now for some reason. But uh, yeah, some you, people. I'll open it up. Anyone want to elaborate on these? Yeah. So I think the biggest one uh, is definitely the uh, not permitting Shakari Richardson to go to the Olympics because she tested positive for marijuana, which I think most people agree is kind of outrageous because like there's no there's no direct inherent performance uh, enhancement associated with marijuana. So it's it's kind of just like suspending her for something she uses recreationally. And I, I like to compare it to like, if you're banning athletes for like using alcohol or something, you know, or like like drinking alcohol. It, it's a little ridiculous. Uh, it's going to be legal in the next few years in most of the states anyway. So it's kind of insane that this is something that's preventing... Um, you know, one of the, the best athletes in the world right now from being able to compete and do what she loves. Yeah, and I mean, that's all good points, but uh, does anyone else have any ideas, Chris? So I think there are a lot of things wrong with it, with just the rulings in general, but I think there are some um, arguments or, or at least some from a scientific perspective about marijuana and how it can potentially impact uh athletic performance maybe not necessarily like during an act active event but as far as recovery or even endurance for uh certain events while this is uh shikari richardson is a sprinter um i think there have been some sources that cite marijuana as reducing pain and potentially improving endurance in athletes and it's also important to consider just how this is a global event and they're trying to uh, trying to keep things fair for all the athletes and with that you have a world like drug administration that's saying uh marijuana is not allowed it's not necessarily just uh you the u.s deciding that oh marijuana isn't allowed because we say so so i think there's a few perspectives to take uh to take this on but i do think marijuana itself is a bit of a Poor excuse to make someone miss their uh, the Olympics. Uh, I mean, I think my my take on it is that the drug rules for the Olympics are pretty outdated or like archaic. I think it's um because my thing with marijuana is like I can understand banning it for certain events, in which case you being in like a sedated or more relaxed state would give you an advantage. Um, like archery comes to mind, you know, if like you're all tight and stuff during archery, it's going to be, it's, it's detrimental to you. So you might take weed to calm you down and banning it for that event makes sense. It doesn't make any sense for you to ban it, for you to ban it for a track, for a, what, a track or swimming or any other, you know, or any like actually active sport. It's uh, like, yeah, I feel as if it should be a lot more nuanced, the, the doping policies, because it makes no sense for a, a for a, a track and field athlete to be missing the Olympics because she decided to do some weed. I mean, I would also argue, I don't know exactly where she's from. It looks like she's from Louisiana, I think. And um, she is a role model. So if she's from a place where weed isn't legal and she's using weed, I would argue that is a little bit of a uh, probably a bad example to set. I don't know if that matters. I mean, yeah, but this being a bad example and a reason to not go to the Olympics. Yeah, I feel as a You know, I think we, we've sent plenty of terrible people to the Olympics over the yeah, years. That, that's true. <laughs> Fair enough. 
<laughs> also, allegedly, uh, she was it was only like a one time thing that she was doing in Oregon while her uh, what she was doing with the death of, death of her uh, biological mother. I mean, so it wasn't uh, something that she had uh, allegedly been consistently using. That's, I mean, sure, but, like, athletes have come with all sorts of, like, excuses to justify a drug test before. So it's like, I, I, even one time thing or not, at the end of the day, it was still in her system. Right, and she um, knew she was going to probably be tested, right? Yeah. Danny, what? Oh, I was going to say, if, um, if weed is explicitly stated in the, you know, the doping agency or whatever, the, those rules that, like, it's outlawed, then, like, it's, it's a little more reasonable you know but i still i still think that just means the rules need to be changed rather than like you know she actually did anything wrong so yeah and i mean i think it is explicitly stated like there's like a list of uh banned substances okay so then the question is does do we really think that there's such a performance advantage from marijuana that it should be removed or it should be uh banned because it looks like from research, there are, again, some benefits. And when you, you, it's hard to say that you can just say, oh, these events are having these substances banned and these events are not having these substances banned. You know, is that I mean, something I think that should be done? Sorry, uh, I was going to say, I think it's important to also consider, like, I think, I think logically smoking weed is more... It also poses a detriment to your performance too, specifically like in terms of uh, damaging your lungs, you know. And and for a for a sport like running, you know, you really need all the uh, all that um, lung capacity you can get to really make sure you're getting the most like, all the air you're breathing in. So you know, I feel like whatever whatever recovery benefits or whatever there might be, it's kind of it's kind of overtaken by that when like your actual performance during the event might be hurt by you know that effect. Um, of smoking weed on your lungs yeah it's like i think i i agree that it should be case by case i think like you you can you, you outright banning it or out loud you, you definitely can't outright allow it because people who because we would actually give you a competitive advantage in concentration based sports but outright banning it just seems to lead to you know mess like messes like the one that's happening right now with shikari richardson so it feels like the best middle ground is just doing case by case. I think the best thing we can hope for is like after this, um, you know, after all of this, there's um, there's a big like overhaul and they, you know, they they think more about like the laws and stuff and what what is and isn't a prohibited substance and when, you know, so, so there's I hope this opens up more discussion with like the people who actually have the power to change things to uh, maybe change the rules and stuff. Yeah. Um, Chris, do you have any other thoughts on the drug rules? Uh, as far as Shikari Richardson and the drug and the like, anti-doping agency rules, not uh, not really. Uh -huh. I do think it's interesting how they take like t drug testing and just test testing in general for the Olympics. Though I don't. Do you want to segue into the gender and hormone testing discussion? Oh, what do you? What do you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. So, as many people may know, the over the past several years, and actually throughout, apparently throughout history, uh, there has been a lot of uh, controversy regarding uh, gender testing of athletes and female athletes specifically, because they're um, they obviously the intent is to determine whether a female is allegedly female enough to compete in female Olympic events. And that can be done through hormone testing. There are apparently like physicals done. There is at one point a nude parade in front of a uh, gynecologists to determine whether someone was a female competitor. And I think overall the intent is, uh, is masked to be competitive integrity but at some point it's not really getting the point of competitive integrity when you're preventing people from competing that just have natural conditions and genetic mutations that would rule them to not be female even though they are uh, what do you guys think about this i know there is a case where uh, i believe castor semenya was uh 
restricted from competing and also apparently in I believe 2014 uh I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this right Duty Chand uh was also uh restricted from competing in, in Olympics so what do you guys think um Sean what do you think about doing about like the hormone testing and uh you know the gender verification stuff that the Olympics does right I mean my feeling is the way gender has changed in like the last 20 years, we have some catching up to do uh, in society. And I think the Olympics is a big part of that because if we're going to have like um, trans athletes competing and stuff like that, and the way gender identity has evolved, it's not really me very sensible to have uh, Olympics even divided into like male and female for every sport i think is what it is right yeah and but the thing with that is like i i it's like i can understand like hormone testing but it's like i i agree that some of the stuff that chris listed was a bit excessive like the nude parade and all that it's like just do the damn hormone test if they have too much testosterone then you can figure stuff out but it's like you know you don't gotta make them strip nude for no reason it's like that doesn't confirm anything Right, but also, like, hormones are something that vary from person to person individually, and I think there's a genetic component to that, right? So it seems kind of weird to... Where where do you draw the line? Because there's someone who might not even be doping who just has abnormally high testosterone levels, and they're going to have an inherent advantage. And I don't know how you really deal with that. That is That's exactly what happened to Semenya, and there's there are apparently procedures and, like, um, drugs you can take to limit testosterone mm -hmm. but the thing is it's kind of um interesting how they do draw a line on max testosterone concentration in women when there are even p uh, men co um, competitors and athletes that are allowed to actually take approved steroids to boost their testosterone if it's considered to be too low so yeah. i think that's a little interesting contrast there it's so Oh yeah, go ahead. Oh, I I lost my train of thought. I'm sorry. You can you can come back to me. Okay, I was thinking along the lines that if um the the athlete you mentioned, if just genetically her hormone levels are her testosterone levels are higher than other females, I don't think that should disqualify her for the Olympics. I think at the end of the day, it's like you know some it's like genetics are what make like good athletes. You know, it's like some people are just born to be better at some at certain activities than other people. And at the end of the day, if you can verify that by doing a hormone measurement, then sure. But like, you know, it's like, that's part of being good at something is most people who are good at something are born with stuff that makes them stronger in that category than others. Yeah. And that, that takes me back to what I was going to say, which is just like, you know, you watch the Olympics because you want to see the best of the best from all around the world compete, you know, and it's just about celebrating the, the human spirit, you know, what, what, what humans can do when you really like spend your entire life devoted to one thing. And, and so to tell someone they can't compete because of a, a natural thing that their body, you know, it, it just, it's just them, you know, they're not doing anything wrong. It's just, they, they were born that way. They were given an advantage, you know, it, it'd be like, it'd be like having a, a height limit or something, you know, like, Oh, you're too tall to like play soccer or something. So you're, your band you know it, it's really it's dumb you know i, I want to see the best of the best and you know those those genetic advantages you know um yeah it, it might not be fair that not everyone is like at the same but like that's not anyone's fault you know it, it just makes them the athlete that they are yeah and i think that's a good point and it ties into the earlier discussion we had about drugs right it's like if um if it's just genetics there's no reason to ban it you know that's just like who the person is there's you know you, you can't ban someone for just being the way they are and then prevent them from competing and it's like like danny said you're here to see the best of the best so why not let people who are legitimately good perform but yeah other thoughts and if you're going to make that argument though yeah, then the line between male and female sort of i feel like it's a little bit blurred like i'm just male and other competitors are just female so why are you drawing the line there it's just naturally the way they are even though males have higher testosterone chris your thoughts i mean yeah i feel like it it doesn't make sense to 
put like a hard limit on someone's testosterone like that. It it if they're if they're born if they're born, I'm gonna. No, I mean I'm not even sure if I want I want to say just if they're born female. If they are female, then just let them let them compete. I think if they're bi- if they meet the biological requirement of having certain chromosomes or such, which is what they I believe they used to do. But even then, I guess. It's hard. Well, it's actually hard to find uh, the biological like, factors that would make sense for competitive integrity. But I think it's just like the more I think about it, the more I agree with Sean. Where it's the the borders are kind of arbitrary. But if anything, I feel like you shouldn't put a limit on some certain biological factors for people because there's always going to be those outlying cases because it's the best athletes in the world they have they're always going to be something within their body that's going to make them that could make them better than someone else you know uh Mm -hmm. the an article that i'm reading from i believe new republic it mentions one of the best uh skiers in the world that effectively had more um red blood cells in his in his um, body and that just made him great with uh stamina and was the greatest i believe one of the greatest all-time um nordic skiers and because of that it's like you can't prevent him from doing that what are you going to do take like prevent like reduce his blood cells like take, no, you take a gallon of his blood out before he <laughs> <use. Yes. laughs> and like that's like sort of the point of the olympics right you're there to see people who are like literally just built different and you're just there to see like how far they can go right and it's like I still think that to some degree for competitive integrity, you need to have clear boundaries between male competitors and female competitors just because like biologically, like males would beat females in most physical sports. So it's like for the sake of uh, competition, I would agree that there needs to be some sort of uh, difference between the two. But I think that separating that, that distinction should be made on genetic factors. I think that you know, if like if if a woman is born with higher levels of testosterone, she should be classified as a woman when it comes to she should be allowed to compete in the Olympics as a woman instead of being banned for the event. Exactly. Exactly. I think a better solution would be like if they're going to use testosterone as the metric, you just have um like brackets basically, sort of like with uh, wrestling where they have weight classes. But it's basically People, testosterone level. Yeah, I I feel like that would maintain integrity the best and you wouldn't have to uh, give people drugs to supplement their testosterone or reduce it to be within competitive levels obviously people are still going to have an advantage but it seems more fair to me and it seems like a better way to draw the line yeah i think the big thing we all agree on is just that no one should be getting banned for their testosterone level yeah yes but danny what were you saying Oh, I was going to say, I think if you're going to use testosterone levels as like, a, oh, well, it's unfair for everyone if you have higher testosterone levels or whatever, then I definitely agree with what Sean said. Because that, that removes like all doubt about it. You guys are all, you have the same hormone levels, just run, you know? Well, at least approximately, yeah. Yeah. And I mean, while we're on the topic of banning things, uh, recently, uh, there was another thing that the Olympics banned, uh, swim caps, specifically those catered to uh, black athletes thoughts that was a pretty good transition ah it's racism by the way institutional institutional racism expand on that i haven't heard anything about it or yeah okay go for it so i think it's a specially designed swim cap uh called the soul cap which is made for uh black swimmers because the pool water is more damaging to their hair Because you know how black hair is, you know, different than most other people's hairs. So, and I think you should be allowed to compete in like, you know, your, your favorite sport or whatever, whatever you're good at without risking damaging your hair, you know? So I think it's, I think it's great that that is a thing that we have so that, you know, black swimmers can swim and not be worried about that. And, um, I think banning it is a little outrageous, especially for the reasons that they outlined, which is just like, it's shaped differently than a normal swim cap. Like that provides a uh, any major advantage, if yeah, any yeah. at all. Also, speaking to the shape, it's it's 
larger and it provides more drag and resistance than the average swim cap. So, so you're like swimming how, with a disadvantage. Yeah, exactly. Just like how weed was uh, fucking over Richardson, these hair caps are fucking over black athletes, but somehow that's considered... Well, that's advantage. not competitive integrity. It puts them at a disadvantage, right? So and They're claiming that it's like enhances their performance is the problem. Oh, I think the... <laughs> I'm not sure if they're claiming that it was enhancing the performance. I think the wording that was used is that it doesn't fit the natural form of the head is the, oh. is the wording that was used that's in just, the... uh, a little bit that's just dumb so, so <laughs> heads are all the same shape and size now <laughs> we're, we're gonna lay out the and define <laughs> what the shape of a head is i don't know chris and i have the exact same head it feels if the olympics are just looking for the perfect athlete who only drinks alcohol who is has a perfectly shaped head and who doesn't who has optimal testosterone levels that's the kind of competitors they want and and has a lot of sex because apparently they fuck a lot at the olympics <laughs> tokyo's considering banning alcohol though from the athletes village it's its own thing but yeah that's not gonna go over well but yeah like, back like to the, the race the oh, well. oh, oh like, like the city specifically no ioc pressure or anything no, like the the yeah the Olympic Committee. It's based on like oh, okay. COVID concerns. People are like, if people get drunk and party, they're going to spread COVID, which is like, what? But I mean, people are already hating on these Olympics and just adding all this extra stuff to it just makes them hate it even more. Yeah, I think but most yeah. people agree. Oh, I'm sorry, we keep running into each other. I was just going to yeah, say real quick that I think I think most people agree that these Olympics shouldn't really be happening at all because yeah. I don't know much about the pandemic situation in Japan, but like even the country doesn't want to do them because they don't think they can do them in a safe manner. And it's really just IOC pressure that's causing the event to go on anyway. So in that regard, like, you, you know, on top of like all of this other, all of these bans and stuff and all this testing, mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's it's already scuffed and we're still like a few weeks out. Yeah. No, no, it's not looking good. But yeah, back to like the 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 head caps, it's like, man, just just let them wear their damn caps. Like hello. It's like, you know, it, it makes no sense, in my opinion. But maybe that's just me. Chris, you 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 agree though that uh is that the cap should be uh back in? Yeah, let them wear the caps. I think there's a lot of I think this has happened a lot throughout history, both in sport and just in even in like corporate America. Like people are trying to control like black hair and control black people in the way they like present themselves, and it's just it's just let them let them be, man. Like let let them do it. It's not it's literally giving them a disadvantage, but they just want to protect their hair and like you know sw swim so they're not like having a bunch of resistance, and you're just banning the caps. So it it does it doesn't make any sense. And yeah, I mean, I think yeah, m we're all in agreement really that it's just that it's like Olympics. A lot of their stuff is just outdated. I think in terms of like rules, like fucking, I'm pretty sure like there's a bunch of corruption scandals as well within the organization. But it's just that they need a they need to like they need to tighten up ship a bit. The Olympics are wiling out. But um, one thing that uh, is important to notice is that while the Olympics may be wiling out, in terms of like global viewership, it's I think the Olympics comes in as the most viewed television program like in the world. You know, it's just because it includes every country and it's like, you know, it's the Olympics. Like all the best athletes from the world are supposed to be competing there. So it's like it's the one thing that sort of ties the world like the people together so it's like um like you you said it right now danny that like people are shitting on this year's olympics a lot especially like in japan how do you think that's going to impact uh, this olympics viewership compared to other olympics honestly i'm not really sure i i know that you know overall tv is just dying people are resorting more to like streams and stuff so People who will be watching the Olympics on streams instead of on like a cable subscription, I don't think they'll be included in the viewership count. So just based on that alone, as we move towards a, a um, an age of streaming being the more popular means to get your entertainment, I think the viewership numbers will definitely decline slightly because of that. And then because of specifically everything that's going on, the amount of people who are straight up just not watching the Olympics, I am I'm not really sure. 
I I think it wouldn't be surprising to see a decline just based off of like people saying they don't want to watch because of the bands. Mm-hmm. You also um, have to account for though, on the other hand, like a lot of people are still in quarantine or kind of limited in what they can do. And if there's nothing else to do, I feel like watching the Olympics wouldn't be the worst way to kill time. Do be facts. Yeah, and just looking at it right now, the numbers, uh, the 2012 Olympics and the 2016 Olympics, two of the uh, two, two they're, they're, they're uh, top two most viewed programs in the world. Uh, each is, is estimated they reached around 4 billion people in terms of viewership. So that's like kind of cracked for them. But it's like, this Olympics takes place in a much different set of circumstances than those did, right? So it's like, how are those circumstances going to impact the Olympics? I don't think we can really tell. Because I feel as if, like, I can't recall back to Rio or um, the 2012 Olympics, but it's like, were those, before they started, did, were they, um, like, did they have a similar, like, a number of controversies before they began? Or is it just that Tokyo is getting blasted with controversies? I don't remember particularly if I'm honest because that was a while ago. Yeah. I do know you... that now there's a lot of, even just throughout a lot of sports, just there's controversy as re- in regards to like protests and political activism. Uh-huh. And that has had some sort of, imp- has had an impact on sports viewership. And I think. In whether people are tuning out because of things like the Olympics, you know, banning like Black Lives Matter apparel and, uh, you know, state preventing athletes from staging protests at the games, like that might impact viewership. You know, people might be tuning in or tuning out because of that, you know? <laughs> yes, and, that's also true. And yeah, you're seeing it happen a lot just domestically like you know the olympics still break in a lot of views just because it's every single country in the world competing you know it's like it's a global event is always going to rake in more views but if you just look at america right like the biggest event in america has usually been the super bowl and like the super bowl has been dropping in views every year it's like it's hemorrhaging viewers and maybe it's because the games are more boring now than they were back yeah then. <laughs> and i argue that's definitely part of it but it's like they were boring games before, right? And it's like they still like ranked up there with views just because it's the Super Bowl. Now it's like almost no one watches it. Hey, well, now you can't have boring games any if you want to retain your viewership because people can just turn turn on their uh, their laptops or phones or even a Fire Stick or something like that and just watch Netflix instead. There's a lot yeah. more accessibility to entertainment now, especially with just streaming services and. If you lose if you lose people's attention for a second, they have plenty of other ways to entertain themselves. Yeah. Um the twenty twenty Super Bowl, uh, it's ranked number eleven on the list of most watched broadcasts in America. Uh I mean it's we're not doing terribly, but it's uh I think the most watched uh, broadcast of all time in America is uh Wait, take a guess. Take a guess which Super Bowl was the most watched Super Bowl. Bro, I don't know. 2003. Uh, it, I'll tell you, it's from this decade. It's also okay. like a pre- it asked It actually is a pretty famous Super Bowl. I'm, I'm also just guessing numbers. Uh, was it was it the one with the Falcons? Incorrect. All right, Chris. Uh, 20, 2015. Twenty what? Twenty fifteen. I don't know. I don't you know did. the Super you, Bowl you, number Google. exactly. You actually Googled it. Oh, it I did actually... not. I did not. I'm just guessing. T- tell me. Tell me. Do you remember anything about the 2015 Super Bowl? I mean, I don't. I'm to be honest. I don't really watch football. Like, so oh. <laughs> I do remember people talking about it at, at my high school, though. It was the Patriot. It was Patriot Seahawks. That's when Seahawks didn't run the ball in the fourth quarter. Uh, yeah. oh, and but, did you watch it? Yeah, I've watched all the ones this decade. Except for, I think, like, 2019, just because, I don't know. But, um, yeah, that's the thing. It's, like, it feels as if, like, traditional sports are, like, 
starting to decline in viewership a little bit. Like football, baseball is just a dead sport. I'm going to come out and say, I don't, I, I've not heard a single person who says, yeah, I, I, did you cast the baseball game this weekend? That's, I've never heard that in my life. I don't um, know, man. I went to Pittsburgh and even though they just got out of like quarantine, I think they're filling the Pirates Stadium now when they're there. It's like they got they have probably ten thousand people in the stadium when I went there a couple weeks ago. Well, you know, uh, Pennsylvania. Like, does that really even count? As <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. My uh, my roommate who watches or who listens and is from Pennsylvania and likes baseball is now no longer a fan of our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I do know, don't these major sports leagues, at least, I, I'm not sure if this is true for all of them. I know for NASCAR specifically, uh, they make a lot of their money off of the TV deals, right? They get the, the, the channels paying to broadcast the races, and, you know, it's not that important whether people actually attend the races in person from a financial perspective for the organizations. I would assume it's somewhat similar for most other leagues so even if they do build build a stadium sure it's good for the teams it's good for like the organization specifically i don't know if it's great necessarily for the longevity of the sport because most of your viewers are going to be most people engaged with the games are going to be watching on tv or watching on something else besides you know being there in person okay so i do know for a fact that for for most sports you know They don't, most sports franchises don't rely on the money from, you know, from the fans actually physically going to the event uh, to sustain their, their business. It's really like, uh, you know, money from the league and uh, the sponsorship deals, like you said. So that's actually more important than the individual viewership. However, uh, the, you know, the, the TV viewership is still more important because if that starts to decline, then you're going to start getting sponsors Sponsors are going to want to pay, pay less money because they're getting less exposure. And then, you know, as, as you said, that's going to cause a decline. Well, let's see. Like, looking at NBA finals, like, if you look at the graph, like, it's just, it looks like it's almost falling off a cliff with the number of people who are watching it. Like, um... Well, you also have to factor in the streams, too. The online streams that most people use to to get their games nowadays. Oh, so you're saying it's oh, it's just mostly pirated. So like, well, it's that's part of it, along with like maybe there's general decline for the sport as well. It's hard to tell, you know, because like, why would I pay extra money for a subscription that I'm only going to use for one thing? You know, when when I'm going to get a bunch of other, I have to pay for a lot of other things. I'm only going to use one thing when I can just like find a stream online for free for not that much effort. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's definitely fair. Is that among esports as well? Is the viewership declining? I think um, viewership is rising. Yeah, esports is a bit different. Because esports right. doesn't so do rely think... on traditional TV usually, yeah. right? Yeah. So and also, hard. and also, there's at least for League of Legends. I don't know about other esports, but. They they do this thing called co streams where you get like popular streamers and they'll stream themselves watching the game and talking about it. So those people aren't watching the official broadcast. They're watching they're watching their favorite personality watch the game instead of watching it themselves. You know, so you have to like factor that into when like uh, an official league reports their their viewing numbers because they're they're not accurate because it's that's not everyone who's watching the event. You know. Also, okay. there is a slightly an upper limit for how far esports viewership can go. Because so just, I think what Riot That's is, very true. What, what they're trying to do is just they're trying to maximize the number of nerds they can reach. But it's like at a certain point, you run out of nerds, right? And it's like, it's it's one of those things that I, it's very hard to imagine it breaking into mainstream. So it's like there there yeah. definitely is an upper limit. Hey, being a nerd is in nowadays, man. Oh, no, no, no! Watching Marvel movies is in. Be- being a nerd is still very much. That's out. true. That's hey, true. Oh hey, my god! We taking we can we taking the nerd kingdom to the moon, man. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> that's a, that, that was a spicy take. God, damn. like oh my god, you're such a Tony. No, you're such a Hawkeye. Like shut up, man. You that's not a good thing anymore. 
<laughs> it's not a good thing to be Jeremy Renner anymore. <laughs> But yeah, I think that in terms of like, if we're going to like the topic of viewership, it's like, I don't know. I was like, I was, I was like shitting on the Super Bowl a little bit ago, but I just pulled up the graph. It's like, compared to 1967, where only 20 million people watched it, it's like, you look at 2000 and uh, 2020, you know, you have 100 million people watching it. It's like, wow. You know, it's like, right, but you also have to adjust for like population growth and the availability of TVs, stuff like that. That yeah. was a very bad comparison, right? Because in '67, no one knows what TV is. It's like that's also true. Yeah, I was like, no, that's a bad comparison. But it's like it is actually like relatively stable now in terms of um Super Bowl viewership, and it has been increasing if you look at over the decades. It's just like it feels like, despite viewership increasing, just according to the statistics. It just feels like in my day to day life, like people just Super Bowl. I mean, football or like the Super Bowl just isn't like that big a thing anymore. Right, and I think like ten years ago, part of it was like I remember there were like Super Bowl parties. Like my dad would go to Super Bowl parties with his friends, and sometimes he'd bring me along. Mm. But now, because it, it'd be like they have the big TV, so we're all going to their house and we're going to watch the Super Bowl on the big TV. But now I think it's just so easy to pirate it or whatever that um, a lot of people are just happier watching it on their computers and streaming it in the comfort of their own home, I guess. Also, now a lot of people have big TVs. Also true. Yeah, and that's and that would boost actually the viewer the viewership numbers. But it's like, so you think that it's artificially like like not artificially, but you think that. What are your thoughts on like? you know, viewership is increasing, or at least it's increasing relative to 20 or 10 years ago. But like, do you do you think that it's just like, you know, it's just me, it's just uh, me saying that football, it seems to be dying out in terms of like culture? Or do you think that, you know, football is still like very much, oh, like, it's, it's still on the rise? Well, I wonder if the reason the numbers are climbing is because Everyone's watching it individually now, as opposed to like Super Bowl parties, which yeah. were a lot more common. So I think it's just that as everyone's sort of watching it individually, it becomes less of like a group experience. And yeah, you can still talk about it, but it, you can't talk about it in the same way where you used to, where it was like that party was so sick. And when the guy made that pass, the interception, whatever. Yeah, um, I think that's after I got the three football terms he knows. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I know safety as well. I like to watch some football. Okay. Down. But the thing is, should we shouldn't we make a distinction between the Super Bowl and you know the rest of like the NFL? Yeah. Season? yeah, the Super Bowl is one event, and sports is a lot of events. Because I think yeah, I only watch the Super Bowl pretty much. I think football I think in general, sport. I would argue, is falling out of pop culture, but the Super Bowl yeah. isn't. Yeah. I mean, that's always true. Go ahead. I was going to say real quick, I think the ads are putting in a lot of work for the Super Bowl because low-key now, like, I know a lot of people who just watch for the ads, even if they don't really care for the game. And if something cool happens during the game, that's great, but they're they're just there for the ads and all the memes, you know? Honestly, we should do an episode about the ads because, like, last Super Bowl, the ads were terrible, man. The ads are actually getting worse in quality, I agree. Yes. Like, I remember Doritos always used to have the best ads, but now it's just like... Come I like on. the one they had like a year or two ago. The most yeah. iconic ad ever, I think, has got to be the uh, M&M's I'm Sexy and I Know It one. <laughs> Dude, I mean, 20, 2011, 2012 were just lawless years. Like, there, there was like no like rhyme or rhythm to pop culture during those two years. It's like, yeah. first you, you had LMFAO come out with Party Rock Anthem. And then a few months later, he dropped Sorry for Party Rocking, and they were both bankers. <laughs> and then, yeah. But no, I agree that I definitely think that a lot of stuff, like if you're talking about the regular season of football, like I, I think that that is very much dying. It's like people, I know some of my friends still watch, still catch the games when they happen just because, you know, they're they're on. But it's like it's like they don't even really watch the games. They look up the stats of the players just to see how their fantasy league is doing. You know, it's like the games are just secondary to whatever, you know, statistics or stuff you can just find by Googling. 
and then you can cast the highlights on YouTube and save yourself like an hour of watching boring ads when you can just catch all the highlights. Mm. And that's one of the big things I think that even if we leave like the world of sports dying, do you think, okay, actually, yeah, do you think that sports is dying or do you think that viewership for sports is declining because TV is dying? I think it's definitely the latter. Yeah, because I think that if TV wasn't so like annoying to deal with. Maybe people would watch, you know, like like actual games more often. Besides, like big events, you know, it's like. But now you have to think about ads. You have to think about, you know, you have to think about ads. You have to think about uh, scheduling and stuff. Whereas, like compared to the way people are used to consuming entertainment now, it's just you open up your phone whenever you want, and you have like a infinite array of stuff to watch. I think. Uh... I personally think there are like two things going on with TV being just TV in general dying. Of course, it's the streaming business model compared to like the cable TV business model. You know, cable cable kind of just sucks for consumers unless unless you have nothing to do but watch TV all day. Cable just sucks, right? Most people they will spend like maybe probably like an hour or two, maybe three hours, and if they have if they have that time, they want to watch something specific, right? Or they might be catching up on a certain show or binging a certain show through, throughout like a weekend or a vacation or a break they have, right? They're not going to want to watch like such a wide variety of shows. They might do like two, three, maybe four channels throughout their whole cable TV subscription. And then the rest of the money that they're paying is kind of just going to waste or you're just spending that much on those three or four channels, you know? Mm -hmm. So that is not doing it any favors. And tying in with that is just, the time that people have, you know, no one's going to people. I feel like people are less invested in spending their time doing TV because there are plenty of other things you can do for entertainment nowadays. You know, like gaming has been on the rise. I know personally, like I maybe this is just a me thing, but I prefer like playing video games instead of TV because like I feel like I want to actively do something with my free time to enjoy myself more than just watching TV. You know, I don't know if that's something that's been a common trait, but I know, I think in general, uh, attention spans have been going down and, you know, people want to do things that are shorter and less, uh, less like time intensive. So when you're really reducing your amount of time and then you're trying to selectively choose what you want to consume, I think cable TV is just not the way to go. Uh, me personally, I, I agree with Chris. I need to do something that's like also uh, not only like, like for me, um, a whole attention span is getting shorter. I need to do something that's also physically engaging as well as like, you know, vi visually and aud audibly. So like me personally, I can't just sit down and, and watch something anymore. I have to also be doing something with my hands. So usually like even when I'm watching a game or something on my phone I'll, or on, on my computer or TV, I'm also doing something on my phone at the same time too. You know, so it's just it's we're at a part where people don't collect their entertainment the same way or consume entertainment the same way you know or uh, as chris was mentioning yeah and it's like there, there there have been some attempts to sort of bring back the feeling of television you know it's like because i do i do agree in some aspects that i kind of miss it i kind of miss like knowing that a show that a new episode of a show is going to come out at this time and like sort of you know like anticipating it and like you know the sort of conversation that would create when as compared to the binging model where it's just you have the entire show in front of you you run through it and then you talk about the show for like maybe a week afterwards with your friends and then you just don't think about it anymore so i think the the attempts to sort of bring the original model back i i like i like that you know this hbo does it with game of thrones before you know whatever they did with game of thrones and then um Disney's doing it now with stuff like Loki and WandaVision. And I, 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 I appreciate that model to a certain degree. I think that if it's done well, it, it, it sort of combines a bit of both worlds where you don't have to worry about ads, but you can still get the experience of, you know, television, of, you know, of, you know, like getting invested in a show over a period of time. But I know other people hate it just because they feel as if it's just a way to reel in subscribers for longer, which it probably is, but. I mean, they gotta make money. True. But yeah, I think that 
ways to combine both worlds. The stuff that's happening there is what I like. It's um, but yeah, I think that overall, the point we were making about television dying, it's uh, it's definitely becoming more apparent. It's with like each year as like you know, viewership keeps going down for traditional. Yeah, the reason we talk about sports so much is because like that's the most traditional television stuff, right? Like, like TV for most part has been what sports and news, right? Like those are the two things people go to TV for. And now you can just <laughs> half of that you can do online. You know, you don't even yeah. you don't need TV for news anymore. The internet yeah. kind of just said uh, bye bye to that. <laughs> I mean, also just. Like news news programs nowadays, they're not even news. It's like it's literally yeah. just every feels like every single news program is like a glorified talk show. <laughs> it's oh. like can you yeah. N- news on TV, yeah, it's like it's kinda like you don't follow for the news, you follow for the opinions and like the lifestyle that like that channel produces, you know. I actually watched uh what is it? Bombshell about you know, about the Fox News and the the um harassment scandals there. But mm-hmm. it was interesting because like it took a perspective on like fox news and fox nation where it's like you're not necessarily trying to get them the best information or the most accurate information you're trying to make them feel a certain way by showing how you feel about it or how you say you feel about it and i think that's what you know is going to make money for them you know people want to tune in to watch people that think the way they do or have feel the same way they do about certain things you know so yeah Definitely. And like, yeah, just to sort of wrap up the discussion on TV, then like we can go around and get everyone's like sort of thoughts on where they think uh, the future is for traditional television programs like sports and like news or just shows that haven't made the switch yet to streaming services. Where do you where do you see the future of cable TV going? Chris, Uh, I think all the all the cable TV companies are going to need to find some sort of streaming solution where they offer things on maybe like a channel by channel basis. And that's mm-hmm. assuming that's assuming that the channels themselves don't create this describe this create their own streaming services. I'm, I'm looking at you Peacock <clears throat> um, <laughs> to, you know, just take their content and take control of it. You know, I think TV, if, if the cable TV services don't be, become more flexible in their channel offerings and create packages based on like people's specific lifestyles and interests, it's just going to die out, I think. Danny? I was just going to say, remember when, you know, Netflix and streaming services are great because you only needed one thing to get all your shows, and now you <laughs> said everyone's doing their own streaming things, so you have to pay for a bunch of subscriptions again? Also, it's a little bit like cable too, right? Because they offer bundles of different streaming services combined, so it's like cable and that. It's really the same thing. It's just online now, but yeah. yeah. The biggest um, difference... I like is I think the biggest difference for me is just that ads versus no ads. Traditional TV is always going to suck because there's that's ads. That's true. On. But yeah, what were, you, what were you saying? I, I was just gonna. I just want to reflect on that. I mean, I think unless TV finds something, uh, this, so so they have the subscription model, right? That mm-hmm. they're doing now. I think that's like, you know, I think that's good, and I think unless they find something, then like the traditional TV media is going to die. Because everyone would just rather, you know, pay for a service, and then you you don't even have to sit down at a certain time to get your shows. You know, you can get them whenever you want. You can you can watch them whenever. Uh, it's easily accessible. You can watch them on any device. So I think TV is really screwed unless they find out some way to like, I don't know, something like really revolutionary and bra- and groundbreaking technologically that would that would entice people to come back to TV. Yeah, Sean. I mean, I've always sort of associated cable with, like, my grandparents because they're the only people who have, like, enough time to leave TV on all the time and be able to get something out of it, I guess. (laughs) So I definitely don't think cable's really going anywhere. And if I'm being honest, pirating is the future, guys. (laughs) Until people figure out how to crack down, it's really just going to be streaming and then pirating is free streaming, basically. So yeah. not a lot of incentive not to do that right um, now especially with so many sites yeah and my i i agree with like everyone in the sense that if i had to like track the trajectory of media it'd be the sense that television was big for a while 
And then Netflix came out and television started getting smaller. And then now all these other streaming services are coming out to compete with Netflix because of how successful it was. And now all of a sudden we're back to the piracy age, right? Where it's like, I'm not, I don't want to pay for every single different channel. So I'm just going to pirate your shows now. And it's like, you know, like in, in the middle of all this, TV has just tanked. You know, it's like people are now fighting over which streaming services to get and no one even thinks about TV anymore. And if the biggest thing for me, at least, is the fact that ads like I don't see the need in watching TV when I can just watch the same exact stuff, but not have to worry about ads on my phone. And that's like the biggest thing that has to change for TV to come back, in my opinion. It's just that it's like people's time has become a lot more valuable now than it was before. Because you look at like media, everything's getting condensed down to like 30 seconds because that's all people can hold an attention for. People definitely don't have the intention span to sit through ad breaks anymore. So as long as, unless there's something revolutionary, like Danny said, I think TV is just going to die out. Uh, did you guys see like the Queeby they were advertising like one year ago, I think? Like what? the five minute short, short stories, they're like TV series, but in like five Quibi. minutes. Quibi. Quibi. Yeah. It kind of died. It, it did die, but I think that they the were... content was good. That might be the future. And also I think people want to interact more with their, like those interactive TV things that they do. As they get better, I think that might be something that'll, uh, well, not TV, I guess, but interactive sort of stories like the Netflix stuff or, Black Mirror episode, I think they had one. Oh, Bandersnatch, yeah. Bear Grylls did yeah. one too. You could choose your own survival stuff. Right. Yeah. I think but, those might become more popular as time goes on. Yeah, but yeah, I think it just comes down to seeing if, you know, cable cable or like television providers can figure out some way to adapt their content. Because otherwise, it's just going to be the age of which streaming service which streaming bundle do I get or which website do I go to pirate shows? That's going to be the, that's going to be where television goes in the next year, unless in the next decade, unless something changes in my opinion. But, um, all this talk of television dying, let's talk about, uh, instead something coming back. Uh, movie theaters are going to be opening back up. What stuff are people excited to go and see in person? Or are we just going to pirate it online? (laughs) Well, personally, I miss going back to the movies because for me as a kid, it was it was an experience. You know, you you take time out of your day specifically to go to a place and do this one thing. And there's a giant TV and the sound system is perfect. The popcorn is great. I'm I'm so excited for the movies to come back. Well, really, they, they've been back. But like we're just now, I feel, getting to a point where like you're going to see people start going to them more as they feel safer and safer as we're opening up. Yeah. So, which movies are you looking at, Danny? Uh, me personally, I got I got like two in particular. I think I'm excited for. Um, I'm excited for uh, Shang Chi and the Seven Rings, which is coming out soon. Mm-hmm. Oh, did I say two? I meant three. Um, I'm excited for the new Space Force or Space Force Space Jam, Space Jam movie that's coming out. You know, starring LeBron James. I just got Space I... Jam socks. What? <laughs> I just got Space Jam socks. You can continue. <laughs> Okay, and then um, and then I'm excited for uh, the Snake Eyes movie, the uh, G.I. Joe one with uh, Henry Golding. For you know, I, I just like a lot of action, and those three movies are definitely going to have all of that. And I think I think some of the uh, it'll be cool to see what effects they can do, um, especially with like again the action, how, how the sound system is going to make those those action scenes hit different. I'm just really excited. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, Chris. Well, I gotta say, um, this movie's already—I believe it just recently came out in like the past like week or two. But uh, Fast and Furious Nine, of course, gotta see that. That's like definitely up there with some of just the most memorable movie franchises. I just love going to like maybe every every couple of years. You just go see it, and it's just like, oh my goodness, it's a great family experience. A great, it's a great solo experience if you're just going there to want you want to see some cars and see some things blow up and then see and Damn. see uh ben diesel talk about family and beat the hell out of some family. big bulky guy <laughs> like it's it's just an all-around good time so fast nine for sure i need to go see that uh 
bring back the OG Fast and Furious, man. What happened to actually just being about racing? When did it turn into Mission Impossible? Well, they realized no one liked it as much when it was about racing. So now they decided to do anime with cars. Hey, I think like, everyone said Tokyo Drift is the best Fast and Furious movie. I mean, it is. But it's it's the escalation problem. And I think maybe yeah. there is an episode. We, we could do it. Honestly, we could do a whole episode on the escalation problem in like anime and just action movies in general. But for, for Fast and Furious, <laughs> it's really just how can we outdo what we did last time? You know, yeah. that's how they end up in space. <laughs> you know? So, yeah, I, I'm definitely excited. I would be excited for Fast 9 if I had seen all of the other movies, but me being me, I'm not going to watch it until I've seen all of the Fast and Furious movies. You got you to gotta binge them, man. Yeah, for real. Better things to binge, but sure. <laughs> uh, the other movie I'm pretty excited about is, you know, all, all the MCU movies coming up really look pretty hype. Getting back into the, what, Phase 4. I personally have have some catching up to do with like you know the uh, Disney Plus like MCU shows, but mm-hmm. as far as movies go, I'm really excited about the next Spider Man. Uh, no Way Home, I believe, is gonna be is again. It's like movies are a comfort for me. You know, uh, like you just want to go there, see something you're familiar with, but also see something like really cool on this giant screen. You know, stuff blowing up. It's just fun. You know. Yeah. And I think Speaking that's... of MCU movies, oh, I yeah. want to see Scarlett Johansson on the big screen. That's all uh, that matters. <laughs> <laughs> um, Is she in Black Widow? Hello? Black Widow is coming out soon. You yeah. forgot yeah, that Scarlett Johansson played Black Widow? Or... No, no, no I, I thought it was Black a younger Widow. version of her, so I was like, is she going to be in it still? Oh. No, no, it's, it's, it's like younger. I mean, oh, there, yeah, there is a younger version Are they, of her, are they using guess, de-aging but... stuff on her? No, it's younger by like five years, so they don't have to de-age her. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay. Well, I, mean, I think that afraid... there is also her as a kid as well. If they can, if they uh, yeah. can pass Scarlett Johansson off as an Asian woman, I'm pretty sure they can get away with <laughs> <laughs> being uh, not no, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, man. I'm excited for the Phase Five Groot movie where Scarlett Johansson plays Groot because she said she could play a tree. <laughs> oh my god! But at least for me, I'm excited. Like like uh, y'all were saying, my movie theater, you know. It's like a movie theater is never going to die out. I'm going to be honest. It's just it's an experience to go in there and with your friends and watch a movie. So I'm excited personally uh, for the Eternals is the one I'm looking forward to most. Like just it's it's coming in in November, so it's a while from now. But Gemma Chan is she was good in Crazy Rich Asians, so I'm looking forward to see what she can do here. Also, uh, Kumail, uh, not not whatever his last name is. Um, <laughs> yeah. He was good in um he he was good in the big sick so I'm I'm good, I'm excited to see what he does in a actually blockbuster. It's also ripped now. Yeah, I'm I honest, aren't I you? He's a little face. I see him everywhere, and honestly, I'm kind of liking it. Yeah, no, he's 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 like starting to blow up a little bit, so I'm happy to see what he does here. Um, yeah. but a more but a more comfy movie that's coming out is I miss the old days, you know, when Disney would just drop like, you know, sort of fun little movies that you could watch instead of like having to be always part of a series. So I'm excited to see Jungle Cruise come out with uh, Dwayne Johnson and Emily Blunt. That's going to be fun. Actually, yeah, I thought that one looked interesting as well. Yeah. Oh, another one that I want to see is the uh, In the Heights. It, it's a musical, so but it's by the guy, or it has um, Hamilton in it. You know, it's written by Lin Manuel Miranda. I think. It gets pretty decent reviews, and it's something I definitely think would be cool to see if like surround sound on the big screen. Oh yeah, for sure, I agree. Oh, can I, are you you trying to go with me though? I'm not a musical fan, but you know what? You can pop off. <laughs> yeah. I enjoyed, I enjoyed La La Land. That's pretty much as far as I'll go with musicals. Bro, this is going to be like La La Land, but better because everyone's broke. Okay, maybe. We'll see. We'll see. I'm not, uh, you'll have to sell me a bit harder than right there. But yeah, like I think, you know, it's like television may be dying, but it's like you, you, you can't kill movie theaters, at least in my opinion. I don't want to live in a world where movie theaters are dead. <laughs> me too. But they're yeah, such a great social thing. Yeah, like no, it's, such... I think it's one of the best places. It's like a combination of being cheap and just like a good time. Like I think movies. I don't know if they're cheap. Wait, at least in near me, they're cheap. <laughs> like, 
Okay. Seven bucks for a ticket, bro. That's pretty cheap. Yeah, Mister, I'm from a small town. The cool thing is, like, if, with movies, like you could, if you wanted to, you could pay, go to a fancier movie theater in a nicer area at a rich mall and just like recline, spend thirty Absolutely. dollars on on you're not just going the tickets. To beat down the movie theater with like the nastiest food court. I don't want to go with you. <laughs> Rest in peace, Northgate. <laughs> Man, Northgate is legendary. Northgate is dead. Oh, they really? Died. They died? Yeah, they did die. Ooh, rip. But yeah, um, any final thoughts from the gang on all the stuff we talked about today? <laughs> hey, uh, we... stop being racist, by the way, please. <laughs> I think it's time for the Olympics to get a rework, honestly. Actually, no, I'm not even gonna lie. They need to look over it. They need to, like, fix their rule book because that shit is dying but yeah i think honestly this was a pretty interesting discussion we go from the olympics to tv to movie theaters talk about a lot Re- really really feels like an agora right here guys not gonna lie you really agoraing right now also you missed an opportunity to plug the first episode uh when you were talking about um what was it better things to binge oh um, fast true. and furious yeah, well, go watch the first episode. Hey, I, 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 I have started Arrested Development since the uh, last podcast episode. Hey, I needed you all to start Broad City, though. For real. Maybe after. So I was listening to that, and before Broad City, there was, like, two broke girls, which did something similar, I think. Uh, well, that can be a topic for another time. Shame I missed out on that episode. If there's no other stuff for today, then I think that's a wrap for episode two of the Digital Agora. And our first time going over contemporary conundrums, as Mr. Sean likes to talk about. <laughs> Make sure to like, favorite, and subscribe if you want me to come back. <laughs> All right, but yeah, we'll be back next week for episode three, where uh, hopefully Sean returns. Maybe we get other guests as well. But yeah, thanks for watching or listening. <laughs>